Despite its youth, Hollyoaks feels strangely airless and empty with lots of echoey sound and underpopulated locations. That's not their fault really, that's just a low budget. Sometimes it feels a bit like a non-broadcast pilot that's been running for 11 years by mistake and it has moments that even its most ardent fan couldn't describe as well wicked. I can't even do that thing. Well, we've been waiting ages for you. Okay, I'm sorry. So why the no-show? I, I didn't feel very well. You were fine before I left here, so what's wrong with you now? Look, please, just leave it. Look, I want to know what's wrong with you. Do I really have to spell it out for you? Look, Mercedes is going to ask me. I mean, I don't want my little sister looking like she couldn't care. My period. Right. Well, I'm sorry. Um, can I get you... No. I'll be my... <clears throat> I loved the celebrity interview moments on the show. I remember one researcher, rather unpleasant, cynical young chap, saying, oh, but the show's on so late. You know, the only guests you're going to get are Z-list celebs trying to plug their old crap, which uh, turned out to, to be true. But occasionally, there were still some extraordinary moments. And this scene with Scott Lee is one of them, of course. Now, she and Brian were old chums. You can tell by the way they're getting on. It's a very friendly atmosphere. So I guess her guard was down. And that's when she revealed that her new single, Never or Now, was quite different for her. Quite rocky. It's quite different for me, actually. It's quite rocky. So, yeah. Everyone was just gobsmacked when she said that. I don't think anyone could really believe what they'd just heard. You know? The last thing anyone had expected was for Lisa's new single to be quite rocky. And I could see that Brian was devastated because he hates rock. But it's a classic moment where Brian just comes into his own and carries on, almost as if nothing's happened. And he's even dancing there. But you can tell that he's dying inside. In the last few years, lots of fearsome mythical monsters have returned to our screens. King Kong, the Daleks, and most recently, dragons, in BBC Two's televised entrepreneurial blood sport, Dragon's Den. These are the dragons, the multimillionaire investors on their way to the den. All right, let's stop there, OK? They're not dragons, they're people. And it's not a den, it's a room. They should have called it People's Room. Actually, judging by most of the investors, they should have called it Bastard's Hole instead. Partly because it's a much better title, but mainly because as soon as you see how rich they are, you can't help shouting Bastard at the screen. Take Peter Jones, played here by a blind Terminator, who's so loaded he actually needs a chauffeur to drive him round his money. Today, his £250 million empire... Bastard! Leisure. This opening sequence is shot to resemble a trailer for a Tarantino heist movie. It's essentially the sort of thing businessmen see in their mind's eye when they reach orgasm. Well, apart from this bit, obviously. The other new dragon this series is cube-headed Australian Richard Farley. He joins returning dragons Theo Pafitis, seen here teleporting round a warehouse in order to confuse a cameraman... And Duncan Bannatyne, who waits. That's what he does. Tick follows talk, follows tick, follows talk, follows tick. The show itself is basically a sort of X factor for crackpot inventors in which the dragons, or bastards, line up against a wall, stroking piles of their own money, while an endless stream of suited beggars tackles a set of difficult stairs and then tackles another set of difficult stairs. Yes, the dragons are difficult to please. In fact, they couldn't be more intimidating if they were sitting there with their dicks hanging out. Especially her. Little wonder so many of the wannabes go to pieces quicker than a leper in a wind tunnel. As you can see, it's a designer-looking coffee table. But it's so much more than a designer-looking coffee table. Yeah, it's also handy for covering up unsightly piles of wire. Capable of delivering multiple functionality, including digital TV, whether it's live or recorded TV. Audio. Well, come on, carry on. I don't think they noticed that. That's it. Say what you like about this guy, OK? He is a good inventor of new words. For the home environment where, for the disconcerning uh, home uh, professional. Hi. Hi. Are you serious? I'm very serious. Serious to the point of incoherence, it seems. Whilst you're watching TV that is being generated from the coffee table on your plasma screen, 
You also have the ability to actually still surf the internet, so the two screens work independently. Your modern nonsense has angered the dragons. Have you any idea how many times the amusement industry has attempted to reintroduce tabletop machines? Um, is it a sort of hay? They have been tried to be introduced four, five, half a dozen times, completely unsuccessfully. Oh, the maiden's testiness arouses the dragons. Have one of these, you remember. Inevitably, one by one, the dragons pull out of the deal. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. But not before offering some sage advice. Please, please tell me you're not going to give up your life to go and develop this further. Um, I'm actually in the process of selling my house to actually... actually your what? That's all right, his house is only worth 16 quid. Nick, I felt for you. Having been force-fed a mouthful of bastard pie, the hapless entrepreneurs are consoled by world's tallest teddy bear, Evan Davis, who also gives them a chance to answer back. I'm selling the house regardless. Um, I'll go, go to market, I'll create the orders, and they'll be kicking themselves. Using my next invention, the self-kicking machine. It's not always that one-sided. Occasionally the punters come up with something the dragons genuinely want to invest in, at which point the atmosphere changes completely and the show becomes almost unbearably tense. Theo Pafitas has made the best offer, and now he pushes home his advantage. Are you not just getting £150,000 for 40%? You're getting my time, effort, knowledge, know-how. Mm. This is like a scene from a gangster movie. Sometimes life is about timing. I'm sure you know that. Is he going to shoot them? You could end up being too late. Something could happen. Oh, we wouldn't want anything to happen now, would we? But look at the margins, they're so high. Uh-oh. Let me just tell you about margins. Mm -hmm. Nothing is forever. Human life, for instance. Margins Get squeezed, please. I've seen it, I've done it. You're a dead man. I do appreciate the offer, but I'm afraid I'm going to turn it down. I think you made him a good offer. I do. I hope he, I hope he doesn't live to regret it. Mm. I hope he doesn't live to regret it. You hope he doesn't live? Ultimately, Dragon's Den may be one of the cruelest things on television, but then that's quite fitting, really, because business is one of the cruelest things on Earth, after me. watch the end credits of a TV programme and wondered what all those people actually do? Well, no, nor have I, but apparently they do this. Life's a bitch if you let it get to you. 
That's your lot. It's all you've got. It's the 